Hi, this is Matt from Studio One Expert. I'm excited to welcome you to the very first tutorial in the Getting Started with Studio One series. In this video, I'm going to walk you through getting your software, installing it, and getting it set up to record. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do in order to get started with Studio One is get the software. And there are a couple of ways that you can do that. You can either walk into a retailer or buy it from an online retailer. Or you can go straight to PreSonus' website at www.presonus.com and buy it there. If you're going to go this route, just go over to the Buy tab and select Software Store. And that will bring up this page right here that shows you what your options are as far as versions of Studio One. And it doesn't matter what version you start with. You could start with the free version, which is limited in functionality, but at least will give you an idea whether Studio One is going to work for you or not. Or artist, producer, or even professional, just depending on your recording experience and, uh, and what you choose to buy. The cool thing is that even if you start with Studio One free, you can upgrade eventually as your experience level and your knowledge increase. So... Wherever you start is entirely up to you, okay? So once you've added that to your cart and you click on checkout, it's going to ask you to either create a new account or log in if you've previously created one. Now, obviously, I already have an account, so we're not going to go through this process, but I will show you. This is what comes up once you've logged in. And you can download the installer for Mac or Windows. Windows, guys, you're going to have the choice of either 32-bit or 64-bit installers. Mac, guys, both versions come in the one installer, so you don't have to worry about making a decision. You will need to register your software. Once you register, you'll get a license, and you can actually get an email with, with your license in it, and it will allow you to... Unlock the software so you can use it. As you'll see here, you have content that will help you get started. So don't forget to download these. Okay? First things first, download your installer, then download your content. And the higher versions have more content. Uh, so plan on spending some time, a couple of hours, to download all your content at least. Uh, if you go for one of those versions. Okay, so we're going to... I've, I've gone ahead and downloaded these just so that we don't have to wait for them to download. So what you're going to do is double-click on the installer, and you're going to follow the steps. For, for Windows, just follow the steps that it shows you on screen. For Mac, you just grab the icon and drag it over to your Applications folder, and it's going to uh, get you ready. Okay? Now, I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it again. And once you've done that, you open your program. And the first thing you're going to see is a blank page here. You won't see all these, song, these songs listed. This is only for those who've worked on songs previously. When you're opening for Studio One for the first time, this will be completely blank. Don't worry about that. I'm sure you're going to fill it up very quickly. So the first thing we need to do is set up your audio interface. And there are two ways that you can do that. You can either click on this icon right here, or you can click on Configure Audio Device. It doesn't matter. Either one is fine. And by default, it's going to start with the built-in output, just like that. Okay? So what you need to do is click on that drop-down and choose your audio interface, whether it's an audio box, a fire studio, or some other kind of interface just select that then you're going to have to set your block size the device block size is basically your buffer settings the the higher the buffer settings the more latency meaning if you sing into the microphone you're going to hear a delay and it can be so bad that, that it's almost impossible to work with so you want the lowest settings possible so that you don't hear delay but also so that you're not getting clicks and pops. You just have to kind of find the best, the best number that works for you. 
okay? Just remember, when you're recording, you want as low as you can. When you're mixing, you want as high a number as you can, okay? It's your choice. You can choose between 32 and 64-bit. You can choose multi-core processing if you have multiple cores in your computer, okay? Pay close attention, again, to the input latency I just talked about. That that's This is where you'll see that. Anything over 10 is almost unusable over 10 milliseconds. So try to keep it under 10 milliseconds. Okay. So click OK on that. Now your audio interface is connected. So the next thing you want to do is configure your ex external devices. This would be your MIDI controller, your keyboard, uh, anything of that nature. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is click Add. And if it's a keyboard, and for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm using an Arturia Mini Lab. If you do not see the name of the company that makes your controller in the list, just select New Keyboard. Add a name there just so that it has a name. But when you come down here to Receive From, Usually, it will show up. Receive from, send to, click OK. Now it's showing that it's connected and you'll be able to use it with Studio One. And that's it. So stick around for the next tutorial where we're actually going to create a new song and show you how to get everything set up to start writing tracks. All right, thanks for joining me. This has been Matt with Studio One Expert. See you soon. Thank you.